Hello everyone and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics and much much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our Patreon supporters for making this video possible and we would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava and today we are continuing to investigate calendar anomalies, that is, predictable stock market patterns that are associated with varying calendar effects. And today our topic is the so-called turn of the month effect, stating that the most positive returns that the stock market experiences over the years is concentrated around the turn of the month, so around the end of past calendar month and around the start of the next trading month. To verify the existence of this peculiar calendar anomaly and to provide some ideas why it might originate at the first place, we have got data for S&P 500 prices and returns starting at 1960 and ending at year-end 2020. So here we've got S&P 500 uh, price index and uh, daily returns calculated using the usual formula. And to figure out the turn of the month fact, we first need to use some date formulas in Excel to associate month indices to our observations. So we can use the month formula and refer to the column of dates and retrieve month numbers. So 12 would stand for December, 1 would stand for January, 2 is February, and so on and so forth. So we have got month indices assigned to every single of our observations. Now let's retrieve the indices, so the numbers of trading days in a particular month. To retrieve that, we need to apply a simple if formula. So if our month stays the same from the past trading day, then we just add one to the past um, day of the month. And if the month is new, as it's indeed the case in our first observation, that's the first trading day of 1960 and the first trading day of January 1960, which is most important for this particular formula, we just return one. And bottom right clicking it all the way down, we see that the days of the month indicator that identify the number of the trading day in a particular month increases up until the point when we're moving up to the next month, here February 1960. We start from one all over again and we proceed doing that for the whole sample. And now we can retrieve some stylized facts regarding the average returns at a particular day of the month. To do that, we have got this table over here that has uh, an identifier of the day of the month and we can calculate how many observations we've got. We can use count if function and refer to the array to the column of days of the month, lock the rows here and count the observations if and only if the day of the month is corresponding to a particular number. So we can see that there are 732 observations when the day of the month is one, so for the first trading day of the month. And uh, we, we can see that some months, uh, very few months to be precise, have as many as 23 trading days, and most of the months end uh, at uh, 21, 20, or 22 sometimes. And now we can calculate the average returns corresponding to these uh, day of the month indicators. So we can use the average if function in that instance. Again, refer to the condition, so day of the month should be equal to the particular identifier that we've got over here. And then we refer to the array of returns that we'll calculate the average of. And locking rows here as well. And we can see that the average return for the first day of the month is 0.13%, 13 basis points. And bottom line, clicking it all the way down, we can see the dynamics whether there is any pattern that we can identify looking at this particular table. And we have got a chart over here pre-constructed, and we can easily see that positive returns, very high positive returns in that regard, are clustered around the turn of the month, and that's quite identifiable, even graphically. We can see that very high average returns are clustered around the first three trading days of the month and around the end of the month. While there is also some notable spike around the middle of the month, uh, in trading days 11 and 12. And uh, most of research that has been studying calendar anomalies refers to the turn of the month effect uh, corresponding to some 
uh, identifiers of um, first few and last few trading days. And there are two most common methodologies that you can refer to when calculating these. The most famous one is the one provided by Laconishok and Smith in their 1988 paper that defines turn of the month effect as the abnormal return obtained from the first three days of the month and the last four days of the previous month. To code the turn of the month dummy variable that would be equal to one in the turn of the month and zero otherwise, we can use our day of the month over here. We can say that if, first of all, the indicator of the day of the month is less than or equal to three, so first three days of the month will return one, we're indeed in the turn of the month, and otherwise we need to check if the month indicator four days ahead is equal to the month number right now. And if it's the case, if we are still in the same month, then we return zero, and if four days ahead the month indicator changes, we return one, because it means that we are in the last four trading days of the month indeed. And we close the parentheses, close the parentheses again, and enforce this formula. And we can see, just as this methodology specifies, we get the seven uh, turn of the month day period, with four last days and three first days. And these four last days would be different depending on how many trading days are there in a particular month you are considering. And uh, another methodology that is less commonly used is the one offered, suggested by Ariel in 1987, that says that turn of the month is first two weeks of a particular trading month, as well as the very last trading day of the previous month. And Ariel was motivating his methodology, his approach, by looking at this particular pattern with some positive returns clustered around the middle of the month. So he was not uh, disregarding this bit with positive average returns, while also considering that only the very last trading day of the previous month would be considered turn of the month indeed. So to refer to this particular methodology, and uh, remembering that there are five trading days in a week, Monday over to Friday, we can see that uh, the turn of the month as per aerial methodology can be coded the following way. If the day of the month indicator is less than or equal to 10, that's first two weeks, five days and five days more, then we're indeed in the first half, first two weeks of the trading month, so we return one, we're indeed in the turn of the month, and otherwise we just need to check if the month indicator of the following trading day is equal to the month indicator of the current trading day, and if that's the case, then we return zero, we're no longer in the turn of the month, but if this month number changes, then we can refer to one. So we can identify that it is the last trading day, so it is turn of the month as per Ariel's methodology. And again, we can enforce it all the way down, and we can see that in that case, we have got turn of the month identified as the 20th day of January 1960, and the first 10 days of a subsequent February 1960. And now we can use dummy variable regression, regressing our returns onto the dummy variables for turn of the month, to see if the differences in average returns is statistically significant. First of all, let's do the regression for the Konishuk and Smith methodology, selecting a 2x5 array for the Linus template, and using the Linus formula, inputting our dependent variable, our y variable, which is the return over here, and our explanatory variable will just be the Laconishuk and Smith 1998 uh, turn of the month indicator over here. And then we return one for the constant because we want a constant reported that would be the estimator of average return not in turn of the month uh, on all other days that we have in our sample, and we also return one to get the additional output, the additional statistics for the regression, the standard errors, and the degrees of freedom. To be precise, that's what we need for t-tests. So we close the brackets and enforce the Linus formula using shift control enter, and we get our estimators for the coefficients. We can see that the average return, when we're not in turn of the month as defined by Lacan, Shock, and Smith, is roughly zero. So you're not getting any abnormal positive returns if you are uh, investing in any time apart from turn of the month. While in the turn of the month, the average normal return is eight basis points per day, which is quite a substantial difference. But is that statistically significant? 
To determine that, we have to calculate t-stats, dividing the coefficients, the estimators, by the respective standard errors. And then we can use the two-tailed t-distribution, t-dist.2t, and inputting the absolute values of the respective t-statistics and the number of the degrees of freedom returned in the Linus template to figure out the p-value, to return the probability that this coefficient is equal to zero, that the coefficient value is undistinguishable from zero statistically, and that it is not zero in our estimation due to pure random chance alone. And we can see that the p-value of the uh, turn of the month coefficient is roughly zero, it's very, very low, meaning that it's very unlikely that such a pattern emerged from randomness alone. It means that this pattern is quite systematic. And the constant is actually statistically insignificant, with this p-value being much higher than 10%. It means that significant returns are being obtained only in the turn of the month as identified by Lacan, Schopenhauer, and Smith, which is indeed a puzzle. Now, let's see whether the Arial 1987 methodology might be better in capturing this seasonality pattern. To do that, we can again select um, a 2x5 uh, selection of cells and use the Linus function referring to, again, returns, and now the Arial 1987 turn of the month dummy variable, and again, returning one for the constant and one for the additional statistics, enforcing the Linus formula using shift control enter. And here we see that Still, there is a positive difference between the returns in all other days and the returns in the turn of the month. However, it's less in terms of magnitude. But to verify whether the statistical significance is smaller or higher, we can just copy these formulas across and see that the T stat for the aerial turn of the month effect is quite a bit less. Uh, it's still statistically significant 10%, but insignificant 5% meaning that the pattern identified by Lacan, Schuch, and Smith is quite a bit more robust, with the magnitude being uh, 8 basis points instead of 3, and the significance being much, much higher. Well, what are potential explanations for why something like that happens on stock markets quite uh, persistently across six decades? We have investigated the market from 1960 until 2020. Well, if we look at the average returns across different trading days, we can see that there are spikes around the uh, end of the month, the beginning of the volume month, as well as some not so notable spikes at the middle of the month. And uh, the most common suggestion, uh, the most common theoretical speculation that is proposed to explain such uh, an anomaly, such abnormal behavior of the market, is associated with paydays and uh, cash flows. That is, when employees receive paychecks, they tend to invest some proportion of it uh, on the financial markets, or they use schemes such as pay as you earn and uh, dedicate a part of their salary to pension funds, public or private. And it means that the amount of investment in the market is much higher during paydays and around paydays. And given the fact that most employees receive their wages around the turn of the month, and some might receive part of their wages, part of their salaries around the middle of the month, that's why the flows of funds to the market might be higher around these days, which can potentially explain such an anomaly. However, it still remains a market inefficiency sign because the market does not anticipate it and uh, accommodate the expectation of these flows in advance, and it still provides uh, an arbitrage opportunity. You can devise a profitable trading strategy by investing around the turn of the month and divesting your funds to some other means when the turn of the month is not here. And that's all there is for turn of the month effect and using two different methodologies to identify it on the stock market of your choice. We have also identified some theoretical reasons for why turn of the month exists and some statistical tests and some uh, date formulas in Excel to better comprehend what is going on with your data. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I make it to see any further suggestions on videos for business, economics, or finance topics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.